take NBC Sports Radio with you on the go with our app. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, welcome back, everybody. 855-3234-NBC. It is Friday. And a couple more training camps opening up around the National Football League while the Rams wait on Aaron Donald, who some people think might be the highest-paid defensive player in NFL history when he gets his new deal. He's holding out, by the way. Uh, the Tennessee Titans locked up their own run stopper. Jarrell Casey signed a four-year extension today worth $60.4 million, $40 million of that guarantee. Now, like Donald, Casey had a couple of years left on his contract. However, he had already gotten to his second contract, which in some cases is um, something that can't be ignored. But listen, if you're, if, if you're the Los Angeles Rams, you've got you to get Aaron Donald done. I don't care. What, by the way, they knew this was coming. They let Janoris Jenkins walk. He's, he's with the Giants. Then they can't come to a decision with regard to Tremaine uh, Johnson. So they, they franchise tag him. So that entire $20-some million, whatever the hell he's getting paid, it goes to the cap this year. They mismanaged that thing in L.A. They should have left some room to get Aaron Donald done. My guess is they will get him done eventually. Not that that means that the Rams all of a sudden will become a playoff team, but he is one hell of a football player. Uh, back to Jarrell Casey for a minute. Uh, he's had 12 sacks as a nose tackle over the last two seasons. You're wondering how much Aaron Donald had from a sack standpoint over the last two seasons? He had 19. So that $40 million that, uh, that Jarrell Casey is making, eh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Probably double that. I'm getting close to it. I'd say $70 million probably guaranteed. Listen, this guy I think is more disruptive than an Indomitian Sioux has been over the last couple of years. That's just my opinion. Meanwhile, uh, we talked to you yesterday. This is a big story. Uh, that Joe Flacco happened to go down with a back injury weightlifting. Apparently it was, you know, some kind of a, a disc issue. They thought four to six weeks, and they said, oh, maybe, you know, give him a week off. He'll be all right. Jim Harbaugh, not Jim Harbaugh, but uh, John Harbaugh, the, uh, the head coach of the Ravens, opened the door to Colin Kaepernick, all right? And we thought, hey, this is a perfect fit. Great organization, guys that aren't afraid of people who have different thoughts, believe differently, different philosophies. And I think it upgrades your, your roster immediately. I mean, listen, Colin Kaepernick almost beat the Ravens, as a matter of fact, coached by one John Harbaugh, just a couple of years ago in the Super Bowl. Instead, we find out now that the Ravens have decided to sign a kid by the name of David Olson. All right, yeah, David Olson. Hmm. <laughs> Who's David Olson? Well, let's see. He's 25 years old, just finished a 12-game season in the Championship Indoor Football League as a quarterback for the Kansas City Phantoms. Played a couple of uh, years before that on uh, a couple of other teams, including the Iowa Barnstormers. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, that was the team that uh, Kurt Warner, Hall of Famer, uh, played for. Also was a career backup in college. He had four seasons at Stanford before transferring to Clemson as a graduate student. <clears throat> his college career, here's his line now. Got a pencil? One for three for minus one yards in his collegiate career. Everybody out there, for the most part, can say, I pass for more yards than David Olson. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> now, I know John probably talked to Jim. Jim, by the way, coached Olson at Stanford. But I'm thinking, okay, why? As far as Joe Flacco having a problem with the team actually bringing in a Colin Kaepernick, here's Flacco's response today. At this point, I'm, re- I'm really open to anything. I mean, I, I don't, I don't. You can do whatever you want at this position, you know, because I feel like I'm the quarterback, and it doesn't really matter. I'd like to see Colin get back in, and and at some point maybe get another shot. I wouldn't like that to be here. I don't want him to get another shot here, <laughs> you know. But but uh, yeah, I mean, he you know he can come here and, and have some fun. I think it'll be a good spot for him. I thought it would be. And that's not to say it won't happen. I mean, John Harbaugh said we're looking for an arm. Well, David Olson's an arm. At what point do you take a look at Kaepernick? Now, I will tell you this. When you look at Flacco right now, he is the highest paid player in the National Football League this year. Making more money than anybody else. From a cap standpoint, there might not be a lot of money left for Colin Kaepernick. And I don't know, maybe John Harbaugh had that discussion. Hey, this is all we can afford to pay you. You're going to be the backup. You're not unseating Joe Flacco. Maybe those constraints, uh, you know, convinced uh, 
Colin Kaepernick to say, eh, I'll pass. See, we haven't heard from Colin Kaepernick with regard to this yet. So I'm not shutting the door on this, but I would think that there, I would least hope that there's some extenuating circumstances as to why they went out and signed a guy by the name of David Olson. <laughs> what? That's what I said this morning. <laughs> All right, 855-323-4NBC. We told you yesterday, former Tampa Bay Bucks head coach John Gruden wants to get back in the NFL. When we come back, we'll talk with our friend Scott Reynolds. He covers the Tampa Bay Bucks for the Pewter Report. We'll take your calls as well. 855-323-4NBC. You're under center. I'm Mark Malone, and this is NBC Sports Radio and the mobile app. He's the quarterback. You're the receiver. Mark Malone is under center. Catch it right now. All right, the phone lines are open, everybody. We'll take your phone calls at a bit, 855-3234-NBC or under center here on NBC Sports Radio and the mobile app. Uh, we got a hold of an article from the pewterreport.com yesterday that uh, would characterize John Gruden, the former Super Bowl winning coach who is now an analyst for ESPN, as a guy who wanted to get back in the game, wanted to become a new head coach. And I kind of scratched my head a little bit. I thought, wait a second, you're, you're, you're kind of in the game. I mean... You get to play the greatest coach of all time. You get to to really dictate the narrative from the booth. You get to watch film, work with quarterbacks, all those kinds of things. Keep the relationships you had in the National Football League. And, by the way, you're the highest paid employee at ESPN. I mean, every time there's an opening, which happens every year, John Gruden's name gets mentioned. And, of course, ESPN comes in and gives him an an extension and bumps, uh, bumps his pay grade. So I'm thinking to myself, how true is this? Let's bring on Scott Reynolds. He covers the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for PewterReport.com. You can follow Scott on Twitter at PewterReport. Scott, how are you? Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm terrific. So, listen, I've known John for a lot of years. He's a very intense individual. Mm -hmm. When you walked away from the uh, time you spent with him in this interview, what was your first thought? My first thought was, wow, he he really, I I think, is changing his tune a little bit. I think he really does want to get back into coaching. I don't necessarily think it's going to be in 2018, it might be 2019 or 20, but there's a couple of factors, and I'll run through them really quickly. Number one, sure. I, I think you're on the right track. He's got all of the resources available through his job at ESPN to maintain contacts around the league, get to know a bunch of coaches, general managers, stay connected to the game, watch a lot of film on NFL players for Monday Night Football that you know eventually become free agents. Right. And then I also think that the, the, the other side of that in the offseason is he spends a great deal of time studying college football, uh, visiting a lot of colleges. Uh, he's trying to stay ahead of the game in terms of the, the practice trends, uh, the offense and defenses, and, and where they're heading in terms of the directions. And, you know, we've seen what he's, he's done with the Gruden's quarterback um, uh, the group that he works with mm-hmm. and, you know, with, with the quarterback camp. And so each year, Mark, he's got five or six of the top quarterbacks coming out in the draft, and he brings them in, whiteboards them, and then takes them out in the field and, and really gets to know, to know these guys. And, and I think that, that he's, you know, he's had Jameis Winston in there. He's had Marcus Mariota, Carson Wentz, I think Dak Prescott. This year, Patrick Mahomes, who was his favorite quarterback in the draft. And I, and I think that if you look at his career and what he's done, he's won a Super Bowl. You know, he's taken teams to the playoffs. Um, he beat his former team in the Super Bowl. But the one thing he really hasn't had a chance to do is develop a young quarterback. And I think that's the box that's unchecked on his bucket list. And, you know, he, he told ESPN that he regretted not getting Aaron Rodgers in 2005. And if you look at the quarterbacks he's had, you know, he had a hand in developing Brett Favre on that Mike Holmgren coaching staff yeah. in Green Bay many, many moons ago. But it's been Rich Gannon in the twilight of his career, Brad Johnson in the twilight of his career, Brian Greasy – you know, who was in his 30s, and, and Jeff Garcia at the very end of his career. The only quarterback, the young quarterback, he's had a chance to develop was Chris Sims, and he didn't even want Chris Sims. That was the Richard <laughs> K. draft pick. So I, I think that, that it's, it's, he sees an opportunity to, to get in, you know, and he, it, it, the right situation is, is going to be up for, for him to determine. But I, I really think that he wants a chance to develop a young quarterback, and, and I think the last part of this, this puzzle, if you put it all together, his youngest son is a junior in high school, and he's about to be an empty nester. You know, Deuce is, is off, uh, you know, weightlifting, and he's going to be uh, a weightlifting coach with the Redskins. And, and so he's got one more kid, and he spent the last couple of years coaching 
uh, Carrollwood Day School football and, and staying connected there. But when he's an empty nester, Mark, what are you going to do, play golf all day? I mean, I think this, <laughs> this opens up a door for him to get back in the game. And I'll tell you, and I've known John, I covered him all the years he was in Tampa Bay. Um, he's going to turn 54 years old August 17th. He looks like he's 45. He is tanned, rested, and ready. And I would not be surprised in a year or two or three, you know, if he finally scratches that itch and gets back in the game. Yeah. By the way, his wife may be banking that decision for him because I'm sure she doesn't want him hanging around the house once uh, they become <laughs> empty nesters as well. Uh, we're talking John Gruden with our friend Scott Reynolds, who covers the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for PewterReport.com. You're under center. Uh, I, I looked uh, through your article, and by the way, it was fascinating. And as I said, I've known John. He's a fairly intense guy. He's a straight shooter. Yeah. One of the things he said he would do, given an opportunity to become a head coach again, would change the way he deals with personnel. Explain that to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that when he was in, in Tampa Bay, especially, you know, he he truly has never had full say in personnel control. Um, you know, Rich McKay and him butted heads. That was that was pretty well known. Um, you know, his first draft here was was a disaster and really set them off. Uh, those two on on different paths. Um, you know, Gruden did not have a first or second round draft pick in 2002 because that was part of the ammunition that was used to trade for him. And he really, really wanted Brian Westbrook in the third round, which was the Bucks' first pick that year. Uh, very, very multi-talented running back out of Villanova. And uh, Rich McKay had a sight set on Marquise Walker out of Michigan, a slow wide receiver who never did anything in the league. And, and then he said, don't worry, John, I'll get you your running back in, in the fourth round, Travis Stevens from Tennessee. Travis Stevens couldn't catch a cold. I remember Jim Miller was out there when Jim Miller had a cup of coffee in Tampa trying to rehab that shoulder. And Travis Stevens was standing 10 yards apart from Jim Miller just catching passes when he was rehabbing his his shoulder with the trainer right there. And I'm telling you, Mark, these are 10 yard passes, but they're just playing catch here. And Travis Stevens probably dropped three or four passes. Um, wow. So you got to be able to catch the ball in John's offense. You know that. And so mm-hmm. Travis Stevens, again, was a non-factor there. And I think Bruce Allen, you know, Bruce wanted to have some control over the Bucks draft. A lot of people thought that he was John's puppet. That really wasn't the case. And I think you're seeing that as Bruce kind of exerts his power in Washington, um, that they worked well together and they got along, but they did not draft well together. And so I think John is going to want to have more say so over personnel. And I think that he is, you know, at the next stop, if he gets back into coaching, I think that he is going to, going to want to be in charge of of personnel. And I also think that he is probably going to be the first $10 million, you know, head coach in the league. Wow. So what? It's been 15 years, I guess, since he won his Super Bowl, John Gruden, uh, and he's done a yeah. he's done a great job in the television. Which, which again, I, I said earlier, he can kind of control the narrative. He's like Dr. Ben Casey, you know. He's everybody's favorite doctor, yeah. everybody's <laughs> favorite coach. We're, we're told, at least, that on, on a yearly basis, he's contacted by multiple teams about whether or not he's interested in coming yeah. back. I, did, the fact that he's so far removed from having won a Super Bowl. Uh, does that make him less attractive to teams or because of his gig at ESPN and he's on the air so darn much, does it make it more intriguing for owners across the league? I think it makes it more intriguing. I really do. I I think John Gruden could command $10 million a year. I think he could walk in and be the highest paid coach. And, you know, his overall record is not sterling. You know, I mean, he did have some down years in Tampa Bay. Um, But he does have that Super Bowl ring. He has got a dynamic personality. If, if he goes to a team that needs help filling up the stadium, he will do that. Uh, the Chucky persona followed him from Oakland to Tampa. I'm sure it will follow him wherever he goes. Um, and, and, yeah, I think that, that, um, that he has the personality and, and the swagger. And also, too, I mean, when you, when you look at this, Mark, I mean, he came in, and a lot of people say, well, that defense in Tampa Bay was Super Bowl ready and, you know, he won with Tony Dungy's team, but that's really not the case. There was actually 27 new players on that Buccaneer team that were half of the roster that had never played it down for Tony Dungy. And the, the, the free agency brought in Ken Dilger, Ricky Dudley, Michael Pittman, Joe Jervicious, Keenan McCardo, Roman Oban, Kerry Jenkins, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know and, and what he was able to do for Brad Johnson's career at the very end. Uh, just remarkable. And keep in mind that John arrived in Tampa February 19th. That's you, that's about a month later than most new coaches are hired in the league. And free agency was right around the corner. And he was not allowed to bring any assistance from Oakland. So he had 
an entirely brand new coaching staff. Uh, the defense, you know, staff remained intact. Monty Kiffin, Mike Tomlin, sure. Joe Barry, Rodney. 